If you've ever shot a portrait, you know that the background can make all the difference. There's a huge market of custom-made backdrops in all patterns and color palettes, and while they can spice up your portraits, at the same time, if you want a couple of them to alternate between, they can also quickly drain your wallet. In this tutorial, I want to show you a fun way of using a couple of features that are built into Luminar to add any kind of background after the fact and even be able to change it out later on. That way, I can turn this image into this one, or this one, or even this one at a click of a couple of buttons. The main thing to think of when you are photographing the actual portrait is to try and get a more or less neutral grey background as this will really make things easier for you afterwards. You could use an actual roll of grey seamless background as I did here or you could pick any medium grey wall or even a white wall that you underexpose. First I'm going to edit the actual image itself because it's a bit dark to my taste. So I'm going to use Accent AI at its maximum setting and I'm also going to increase the shadows in the light tool. I want a more muted color palette as well, so for this I'll use Reduce Saturation. Now onto the texture. I'm providing you with a sample set of 5 high res textures taken from my texture pack so you can follow along on your own images. There are actually two ways of doing this in Luminar. One is with the Texture Overlay tool in the Creative Tool section, but in this tutorial I'm going to show you another way that offers a little more control over the look of your new background. I'm going to go to the Layers icon and I'm going to click on the plus and choose Add New Image Layer. In the dialog box I'll navigate to the folder that contains my backgrounds. And I'll pick one that looks nice like this one here. Then I'll click Open. At first, it looks like this texture is simply replacing everything underneath, but look what happens if I change the blending mode from normal to soft light or overlay. You see that the new background now blends in perfectly with the grey. Now obviously it's also still covering our model, but we can deal with that in the next step. I'll click on the edit mask button and choose the brush. In the brush toolbar, I'll click on Erase. Now it's just a matter of painting away the texture in the areas I don't want it to be, and because of the way this blend mode works, it is mostly visible in the brightest spots of our model. So there I have to paint a little bit more precisely. But on the dark parts, like the coat and the gun and the hat, I don't even have to be as precise because the texture overlay is hardly visible there. By changing the size and the softness of the brush, I can go into the smaller details. You can also use the square bracket keys to increase or decrease the brush size and use the X shortcut to change between paint and erase modes. That's looking nice. Now, because this is on its own layer, I can use any of Luminar's tools on it. For example, I can go to the light tool and darken the texture slightly. Now, so far I could also have done all of this with the actual texture overlay tool, but the advantage of this workflow is that I can also subtly blur my new background. There's a couple of tools that let me achieve this. First of all, there's AI structure, which I normally use in positive amounts, but negative amounts will slightly blur the underlying image, especially when combined with a positive value for boost. You might also want to experiment with negative values for the sliders in the Details Enhancer tool. Now for this particular texture I actually like it better without the Detail Enhancer, so I'll reset that one by clicking on the Reset button inside of the tool. You could also add a vignette just to your background, which also helps to sell the effect. And here's the best thing of all, when you're tired of your backdrop, you just go into the layers again and you can add a different background by choosing add new image layer again, also change its blending mode to soft light or overlay, and then clicking on the layer below, clicking on the three dots and choose mask copy, activate the top layer again and choose mask paste,
and then select the underlying layer again to deactivate or even delete it. One more thing, if you want to add any other adjustments to your entire image, make sure to click on the plus sign in the layers tool and choose add new adjustment layer and make your adjustments on that new layer. There you have it, a quick and fun way to spice up your portraits shot against a grey background without breaking the bank. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again in another tutorial.